welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education work sessions for April the 27th, 2022. Do I make a motion to move into closed session? Mr. Smith, pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in a closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction, any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals, to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice, and to consult with staff, consultants or other individuals about pending or political potential litigation. Do I have a second? Second. All those very say aye. 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 We'll be back at five o'clock. Thank you. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education for April the 27th, 2022. Can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everybody had a chance to look at the agenda? Yes. Yes, sir. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those here say aye. Aye. Uh, ayes have it. Uh, you've had a chance to look at the April 6th closed session minutes? Yes. Motion to approve April 6th closed session minutes, sir? Second. That motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, you've had a chance to look at the open session for April the 6th, 2022. Has everybody had a chance to look at those? Motion to approve April 6th open session, sir. Second. A motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, now the next things we have some informational items that are just for informational only. Um, we got this and if anybody has questions or at a later date, we can go over this again if anybody has things they would like to review. And always, as we do normally, contact your superintendent of schools for any additional information. Uh, 401 update, uh, and that is the CAD and SSIC update. So, Dr. Kibler. Dr. Kibble, I'm going to give just a, in the way of background information. Just so as you know, the um, policy of policies was um, approved by the board that included in it um, some language changes as it related to a citizens advisory council and a school system um, improvement council, and those would be wrapped under what we would call regulation. So that doesn't come to the board for a formal approval, and so this is really a more of an informational item so that you can understand, um, you know, what the purpose is. Is and the, ch the charges for these committees um, and ask questions and, and, and it, so this isn't meant for a sit and get, this is meant for an interaction. Um, if you have questions, I know Dr. Kepler is well prepared for that. But the board has, right. had, has had input on this as far as the direction and you know, we, we discuss this. Right, we're certainly open for discussion. It, it isn't in the purview of the board to approve, but we, we would love to have feedback. Well, it, it came on to the, um, agenda late, mm -hmm. so I have not had a chance to, I do have a lot of questions about um, these two things, so I would like it, us to come back to it, um, have it presented in, in uh, at some time, when I've had some more time to. Sure, so sure whatever questions after tonight, if you have questions, um, just uh, be, feel free to send them to me and we will you know, update this presentation and, and share it again next month under informational items with any additional information. When you say next month, it probably would not be next meeting, next next week. No, our, our idea was on June 4th to be able to bring you sort of a draft of what we're thinking to show you for the actual regulations. But tonight we were, we were talking this week, just information. Okay. gather information, show you where we're at right now yeah. as, as I'm going to put those regulations Sometimes you, together. you don't know what questions to ask because you don't know where to begin. And so this is just a planting the seed, just uh, putting some information out there to give you some food for thought so that you can think about it um, and if uh, we're, moving forward. And if we're going to have it on June the 4th, that would be, we'd have copies or just a thing to review. Mm -hmm. Sure. The, at least a Friday before that, so we have time for it. As early as possible. Right. So questions, because sometimes people even have questions prior to the meeting that might want to address something. Right. And we were we were originally thinking we might just talk about this, and right. then yesterday we were like, well, let's just throw, we'll put a couple slides it's together. together just, just so. so visually, sometimes right. it's uh, easier for someone to digest information. Okay. 
So just to start here is actually a copy of the education article, if anybody would like um, to look at it, just as it states what we are required by law to do. So we have to establish at least the one citizen advisory committee, and you'll see in a moment that we're proposing two. Um, it, you can also make these for individual schools or a group of schools within the region. And it, a little bit of an outline of who, who could potentially make up um, this committee or committees, depending. And I did link this when you go back and look, if you'd like to link, uh, look at the education article. So what we're working on is developing these two committees, a Citizens Advisory Council and a School System Improvement Committee. And right now, this is where we're thinking of going with the membership. So the Citizens Advisory Council, the one executive team member, a board member, 14 parents on the recommendation, uh, one recommendation from each principal, and then five others, and that would be a recommendation from each of you on the board, a parent, employee, community member, it, it would be totally your call there. And the School System Improvement Committee, again, an executive team member, board member, 14 teachers, it would be one recommendation from each principal, one teacher's association rep, central office administrator and supervisor, uh, uh, one elementary level administrator and supervisor member, and one secondary level administrator and supervisor member. And we can, let's, there's just one more slide, so we'll look at that as well. And if we want to come back and work on membership or questions about membership, that's fine. So um, initial thoughts between Dr. Salins and myself is that these have six regular, regularly scheduled meetings throughout the school year. And because this, these groups would be looking at the policies as well as they come up for review, if we would have a need to have a summer meeting, we could, now that, <laughs> through the pandemic, one of the things, Zoom makes it really easy for everybody to jump on quick instead of trying to gather everybody together. If we do have like an emergency MSDE policy that comes down in the summer, we could get everybody together. But I, I mean, I, I do know from previous experience trying to get people together in the summer for these sorts of things is, is no uh, small task, no easy task. So um, hopefully just do the virtual, again, only if necessary. And then just some of the ideas of what these committees will be discussing. So policy review, school calendar, we'd like to move the school calendar to these two committees, uh, system data review, budget review, strategic plan review, and um, just progress on the blueprint and input on the blueprint as well. That's kind of where we're at with it right now, so I'm happy. So you'll be developing guidelines for each one of these two committees? Correct. Okay. I mean, stating what their purpose is, That's what correct. their actual, what their goals are for each of these meetings, you know, potential outcomes, you know. That's okay. correct. Thank you. And they have to have a sign-in sheet and an agenda and... Yeah, and then a reporting part back to the board because the if you go back to the regulation, you know the purpose of these is to provide information to the board on important things that are going on in the district. So um, you know establishing some type of format to follow up. So if Matt has a meeting, then the following board meeting there would be an informational item that would say, you know these two committees met. This was the agenda. This was the feedback that we received from that um, meeting. And so the facilitator will be the executive team member? Yes. Correct. Okay. I'll probably have more questions, but the one thing always bothers me is to make sure, you know, I like the 14 parents, I like the 14 teachers on different groups and stuff like that, if everybody's involved. Sometimes people volunteer for something and, and then don't show up and all of a sudden you only have three. I mean, I've noticed this with policies, mm -hmm. books and other things we review. Nobody responds to this stuff. And so the one thing, one thing I've asked is when we talked to the, we had a principal's meeting a few weeks ago, and I asked for them to bring the names of the teachers and the parents, and not just to give me a name of somebody they think that would be interested, but to actually talk to these people and identify individuals that are willing to commit. Once I get those names, and I'll ask you all as well for um, over the summer to get the five recommendations that you have, 
Um, I'll actually have the six dates planned for next year as well so that you know I can talk to these people, make sure they are on board, we'll have the regulations to share so they can see it and they can see the dates and make sure that they can commit to that. The other thing I wanted to add is that the meetings for the teachers will be right after school. So that's good. It's not going to be a break where they get to, you know, they're going home or something. And they can also apply to get credit because it's just like participating um, in a school improvement team meeting where they can actually get credit towards a credit, you know, to recertify themselves. So that's actually appealing to many people to, to use that as a vehicle to get recertified. As it relates to the parents, uh, in, in my experience, and Matt and I discussed this, offering dinner options because of when it is in the nighttime where they have to juggle trying to get dinner either before or after the meeting can be challenging. And usually when you have, I know it sounds a little silly, but when you have food there and you bring them together, it ends up helping to facilitate that conversation and to increase that attendance. So I think we'll use different strategies on trying to make sure that we have a, a good representation of attendance. Well, I was just going to say, you can probably remember it as a commissioner when you have a citizen's commission, part of the... Um, that's written into the uh, language of the setting up of the commission is that you have to attend a certain specific mm -hmm. percentage of meetings, and if not, you can be removed. So we could put that's, that. That's that's correct. Else. So and we can put that in the regulation. Yes, we can, and that's a very good point. But also, in order for them to get the credit, okay. they would have to go to a certain percentage of those meetings as well, to in order to get that credit. So they couldn't just come to one and then they get a, a full credit for mm -hmm. it. Because it's based on hours, 15 hours of participation equals one credit. So it will be set up in advance so everybody can know the schedule, what dates it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And like I think it's a great idea if you're going to have it for uh, parents in the evening or 5 o'clock or 6 to have you know yeah. dinner or at least a light lunch or light dinner or something for everybody to have. Because, I mean, I think it's very important because I get a lot of calls on certain issues, mm -hmm. and we all do. Mm -hmm. You know, people involved in what's going on, what's happening. And this is a time for people to get involved. Not, I mean, board members are definitely involved, but, you know, you need to be involved because you got questions and this is how you get it out. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, 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 if it's six meetings a year, that to me is very minimal for somebody to, that, that cares about our thing because, you know, it's our students we're worried about. Right. Uh, well, we're trying to find the right number. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not too much, too many, too much right. of a burden, but yet enough that, you know, we can get the word out, talk about what we want to talk about. And, and, and during, you know, um, you said, well, will you articulate what their role is? Yes, because they really are a representative. So if I'm representing my school, then I'm taking information back to the faculty and I'm sharing that information to get input so that the next meeting I come back with input from the staff and, and same thing for the parent or the citizen. I'm going out. I might be talking to other parents on PTA. I might be talking to parents at a, at a baseball game or a football game or, you know, in my neighborhood. Um, but I, that's my responsibility to go out and kind of seek some feedback before the next meeting and share out at the next meeting. So um, you, you kind of tend to get more than just those voices. You tend to get a larger voice out of it. Yeah, because I mean, you've already, because this is just preliminary and nothing else has gone forward. We certainly haven't been thinking about five names that we want to give or which board member. And you're already getting teachers who you're identifying teachers to be on it already? And what I did, the last time we had a principal's meeting, we have a good of the group where we just sort of, and what I said is I'm going to be asking for you in the coming months to start thinking about a teacher and a parent. And what I'll ask when I ask for those names is that you actually talk to them to get us. And what I was thinking as a target for you all is the summer board retreat to have a name by then. Maybe it'll be the June work session. I, I don't know. And we can discuss that at the June meeting when you're bringing this back in a more formalized That would be yeah. as well. fashion. Yeah, because I mean, you know, the comprehensive plan is is, is for you know, but everybody gets hung up in zoning. You know, what my what's my little thing going to happen? But you, the comp plans comes first, then you have zoning. Our budget we start in November right, as soon as school starts, and you know we're finalizing within another month. And you hear all this stuff that hasn't been done and been done. I mean, so much this work goes in here. But if you can get it, the train on the right track in the right direction with the proper input, it can make it a lot easier, I think, for parents, staff, and everybody to understand. It might not all agree, but at least we'll understand, you know, where we're going and, and everybody have input of it. And I think it can make the board's life a lot easier to make the decisions when it comes to policies to okay and stuff like that when it's had the proper vetting in the community that people have actually looked at it. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. Any, I'm now June the 4th, but any other questions right now? Thank you, Dr. Hibbler. Sure. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Okay, our next update. That's it. CB or SB. Yeah. Here's a copy. You can pass the whole thing down as a packet. This is the thing that was scheduled that got moved. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, executive team members, if you'd like one. Okay. This this is regarding so our health care. Right. The school based health centers and um, and I added this here and, and didn't post this information out. Um, I don't I don't think that our, our you know our, our contract or application needs to be posted out necessarily but I wanted to take the time to talk about the school based health centers because I think they're going to be um, very have a very large impact on the school district and I know with our discussions with Everside I want to make sure that the board understands the difference between the Everside initiative and the school based health center initiative so the school this is the the um, memorandum of agreement for um, our school district and chop tank community health and the purpose of the school based health centers is that it's located on the site of the school and that they provide appropriate medical um, preventative care such as you know um, dental work things like that mental health which is highly needed in all of our schools and health education services so that is their purpose and the main part of that is that this is wrapped around our students so age-appropriate medical for our students where Everside is more for our employees now can a teacher access this at the school yes so the three school-based health centers that we proposed our application is in and has not been approved yet but it is in and you can see the schools there for Sutlersville Middle School Sutlersville Elementary School and Churchill Elementary School and so those three sites um, a, a, a teacher at a site or any other site can go and actually get say a flu shot there or they can be seen but that's not their primary purpose their primary purpose is for health of our students and so as we move down there's a designated person that's responsible there through chop tank for the day-to-day -day operations of that clinic um, of, of that um, support center and they again they support and promote um, health and um, disease prevention. It's a total collaboration, um, mental and dental, which is really important. If you turn it over to the obligation part of it, you'll see a, a list there of exactly what they'll be able to offer for our students. So they'll be able to offer annual physical exams, and those do include sports physicals, which tend to be very difficult sometimes for our students to get. They do uh, health risk assessments for our students, anything that would be acute illnesses, or injuries so someone broke their arm they can address something you know things like that um, or if they have the flu things like that medical care for students with chronic illnesses so students who may have diabetes they, and are on a regimen and need to be seen on a more regular basis they can do that behavioral health and including nutritional and health counseling and referrals out to our community and then as a well for addictions as well so these are some of the services that will be provided I wanted to make sure that the board was clear on those three um, school-based health centers which um, we have done a site visit as well as a site pre-assessment and evaluation through um, Mr. Pinder and his department and we are feeling very confident that all three of those sites will need minimum um, changes to be able to meet the expectations of this site itself. So they literally have a checklist that you have to go through. You have to, for example, have an exam room. You have to have a bathroom within so many feet. It has to have running water and you know things like that. Um, it has to have a reception area. And so uh, the three sites, uh, Mr. Pinder and his team have already been out, uh, walked the sites with um, Michelle Morris that as well as the chop tank folks to make sure that we've you know completed all the checklist and that before we put in our application the application has been finished um, that was this part of the green piece here with the green line on it but um, I'm very excited about it I think this is going to be very positive for our community for our families that need um, 
health support, health care support in that part of our district and um, frequently will go out of district to get services. Now we'll have services right at their school. And um, often those students who need assistance, they never have to leave. The parent doesn't have to leave work, come to get the student, take the student to somewhere else outside of the district so they're missing time from work. And so there's a lot of positive aspects to this and um, I'm very excited about it, but I definitely wanted to make sure that I articulate the difference between Everside, which also has to do with healthcare, and our school-based health centers. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. Well, any, any, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, go ahead. Any student that gets involved, is, it would have to have parents sign off on. I mean, yes, if there's something there's a, being going on. There's an application enrollment process, so there's a, a, a little form that they have to fill out, the parent has to fill out. Um, if the child has insurance, they take the insurance. If the child doesn't have insurance, um, they find means and ways to help the student to get the, the support that they need. Yeah, I, I, will, I haven't had a chance to read this since we're just seeing it, but a couple questions off the top is, it says all the medical records are owned and maintained by the Chop Tank Community Health System. So if a child leaves the school system, they can't get those records and they stay with the school forever? They would or have they to go with, with Chop Tank, so it would be, they would have to apply for with Chop Tank to get them. Just like if you were at your doctor's right, and you wanted to move to another doctor, you would go to your doctor and get those records. Right, but they would give them up. They wouldn't keep a, okay. okay right. Yeah. And then what about, so that are they able to be seen without their parents if a parent no, they would have to get, they, yeah, they have to have, um, now there is a provision through um, Mr. Evans, if he was here, he would help me. There is a provision that, it, there's a law in the state of Maryland that um, students can be seen via counseling without parents' knowledge. There's a law, and I, I can get that for you. I don't have it off of my head. I know if Mr. Evans was here, he would probably recite it because he's so good with all his policies. Um, but other than that, no, they, they have to have a parent. You know, They sign up just like anybody else would. As I said, there's a form in the beginning. If they need to make an appointment, the nurse can call the parent and say, Patty just came down. It looks like she may have conjunctivitis. Is it okay? The nurse practitioner's here at this time, or the nurse practitioner will be here on Thursday. Can I assign her? You know, set her up for an appointment. But if they don't sign up, you wouldn't even ask. They no. would just if go they don't to sign their... up, they have to put an application, and it has to have that on file. They have to enroll, is what it's called, not necessarily an application. I guess that might not be the best word, but they have to enroll in the program in order to seek the benefit. And this is being done in these schools because it's our high where we feel we get the most bang for our buck. Yes, and for location as well because I tried to pursue doing an additional site in Graysonville, but because of the distance from there to their chop tank, which is in Caroline County, the distance was too far for them. So that's why we focused on these three okay. because of the vicinity um, of where chop tank is. Well, bang for whose buck? I mean, because this is for students so but, but, the, but students the, the, stu the students available that are fall into this category can't get other medical like it, I think there's, there's more, more, of more medical services maybe down on Canal and there would be up in that area mm -hmm. so it's going to allow you know those students to have it at the school I mean there's nice they have no them, access but. on they, they really don't have any access right now to any services and not our book but I mean more so these are like little mini clinics of this corporation Chop Tank Community Health right like so Shore that, Health or whatever else they'd have a that's their employees that's exactly right so we have the three sites and they'll create um, a staff member they'll have a nurse practitioner um, so it's a satellite unit at each school correct. pretty much yeah that's a good way to look at it so they won't I won't we you know we won't have um, a nurse practitioner every single day at Sellersville Elementary School access they'll have one and they'll rotate they'll have a schedule or there'll be at certain schools on certain days those three who's paying those three They're just those three schools who's paying those who's paying chop tank so our in-kind service is actually the facilities a chop tank maintains that um, the employee base and they do all of the billing and everything so we basically are it's like a satellite like you said we basically provide the in-kind service of our facility and they do everything else and the, the our representative to work closely with them who is Michelle be? Morissette mm -hmm. so yep. are they how are they being paid is the question by they grant? get paid through chop, chop tank. tank not us they're chop tank employees Chop How tank. is Chop Tank being paid? It is it through mm -hmm. SSI? Is it being well, they, paid through they, Medicare? Is so if paid? I have insurance and I go, they bill my insurance company, and that's how they get okay. paid. If I don't, then they bill medical services. Um, okay. There's no. 
that state of Maryland that provides okay. um, children with medi okay. medical services. Right. There's a kickoff meeting on the 25th that I'm attending. I'll let you know. Yeah. You. <laughs> I'll ask that question. Yes, we are having a kickoff meeting. Um, the health department obviously is a partner, Chop Tank. Um, we'll have board members there, commissioners will be there representing um, our admin team and our central office team. So but that's the, uh, the 25th, 25th of May. May. The 5th of May. And right. So just like any other uh, medical clinic, because they're minors, they need parental consent yes. for any kind of treatment or whatever. Yes. Um, except for mental health counseling, is that what you mentioned? Right. Because there's, that's at in a certain the school, age. Mm -hmm. There's oh, a law, the and I law. have to get that for you. There's a there's a certain law where a child can seek counseling um, and not have the parent involved in that. Right. Okay. Per Maryland law. Per, per, per Maryland, Maryland law. So okay. and those are for reasons like abuse and things like that. I got you. Yeah. Well, it doesn't right. sound like there doesn't have to be a reason, though, if they just want to be seen. Is that correct? If there's a law, whatever the age is, they can be seen by a counselor no matter what the reason? I don't know the answer to that. Because then, so if we don't have anybody here and we would have to send them out, how does it work now when somebody wants to get counseling without these? clinics being here what's our procedure I'd have to get Matt to come back and give you the full I don't want to misspeak okay. I know that we yeah. have several partnerships like for all seasons and uh, I think we have about four or five partners for mental health um, and I would not want to misspeak about okay. their specific procedures and I'm sure um, Mr. Evans would be happy to share that with you when it says annual physicals for students including sports mm -hmm. a lot of that would be probably middle and high school mm -hmm. yes and, uh, yes both canal and and Queen Anne's, of course, Queen Anne's isn't that district, but would be in school. They can make appointments and go they up could. there and stuff like that. As long as they had an application, and I keep I'd saying application, fill, as long as they like were a part, right, yeah. yeah. To do that, but they'd have the ability, mm -hmm. anybody and any student in our system could. has the ability to do this. It's just gonna, I mean, it's a little hard if you're coming from Cat Island to Southernville, but it's still access to everybody. That's correct. So if they did a summer clinic, where they were doing physicals, you know, for these three days of the week from nine to three, mm -hmm. anybody who had gone in and, uh, you know, applied for those um, and filled out the correct information and had an appointment and a parent consent, they could participate. Let me ask you a question. If, if during the summer, would they be willing, and this is a question we ask later, I guess, could they go to both Queen Anne's and Ken Island High School just for a one-day thing to do physicals? They can't do that. I don't believe they can. I believe they have to be at one of those three sites. Okay. Yeah, I can clarify that, but... We could reverse that if they were there some summer, say, the sellers will, they'll be open certain days and send, okay. Yeah, and they did, we did ask them about that, like, could, would you be able to do a flu clinic or would you be able to do, a, you know, the physicals for our students as it relates to sports? And they said, yes, we can definitely arrange to do that but at this time it would be at the three locations we have listed yes mm -hmm. okay so I, I will follow up on the counseling piece and, with mr. And, Evans and this is for students and staff only it's not for parents or anybody else no and some parents this is for students. Students. This, this, this is this one is in our facilities for students, students. and parents. I mean, sorry, students, students. staff only. For this. Right, right. Staff no, members the, the, the can thing. participate, but it's it's the purpose of it is for student care. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Sorry. Any other questions? Not right now. Not a lot of questions. And you'll I keep said us. I would like to read it. Understand. And we and we can put this back on, or certainly you can just send questions to Dr. Salins, or we can put this back on in another meeting if we need more information. And I guess you'll be putting it out on the, this, not on the website to make sure it's going on. To, yeah, we, we usually don't share the MOUs out online like that. Well, no, but, I figured but, we'd get it through our email. Okay. Or, sure. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Should we kind of wait till they kick off on the 25th? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. We'll wait till after that and we'll bring it back to the board and have any additional questions asked. Mr. Pinder, spring break project updates. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, Sid Pinder, Chief Operating Officer. I uh, just want to give you an update. Um, over spring break, there were a lot of projects that were uh, accomplished and some we keep continuing to work on. Um, our time when we can get into buildings is very short. So, uh, cause students are always in there and staff. So we try to manage that time. Um, Jim O'Donnell, uh, 
our maintenance foreman, Carla Polin, our facility planner, myself, were out there along with also John Murdoch because we still had athletics going on. Um, and we still had a few special needs schools across the bus, uh, Bay Bridge that uh, you know had different schedules. So we still had buses traveling. We still had athletic events occurring. So we never really shut down the whole time. Um, but we were able to accomplish a lot over uh, spring break. And if you ride by Queen Anne's County High School sometimes, um, we were able to put in LED lighting throughout the whole parking lot there. And um, we're now doing the pedestal lighting there. If you've ever been up there before at nighttime, probably Ms. Hudak can attest to this, it is hard to see. Um, Jim O'Donnell um, worked with the, uh, Delmarva Power to uh, get some grants and rebates to cut that down. So Queen Anne's was our last school. All of the schools now have LED lighting. Uh, the last one building that we have to do is, is the warehouse. Um, but that will help us out tremendously because we'll no longer have to send maintenance guys out there because of the life cycle of you know the LEDs. We're not replacing the metal halides. Also, it's a cost-saving measure for all of us. Um, we had a water main break. Um, behind Queen Anne's County High School where the CTE section is and we were able to spot that fairly quickly and get a crew in. Rough part was it was under the blacktop so we uh, took us a while to get in there and then once we kept finding one piece we would find the next piece and the next piece. Um, so that, that took a little bit of time to replace. Um, through some of our site visits with uh, Dr. Salen, some of the principals had pointed out a couple items that you know they needed uh, to get repaired. We were able to repair the uh, flooring in the hallways at, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Centerville Middle School, and also the gymnasium at uh, Kennard Elementary School. Uh, we were able to replace the VCT in there over break. Uh, Along with that, we had some issues with uh, water heaters at Mattapique Elementary School and Centerville Middle School we replaced. We had some roof leaks at Kennard Elementary School and also Queen Anne's County High School. Um, we were able to tackle those. And those are probably some of the tougher ones because the one at Kennard was probably the size of the pen, top of my pen. It was probably about a half inch long that we could not find for a longer, long time. We were able to find that and actually fix that. Um, so I want to give some shout out to the crews that were out there for that because that was not an easy one to find. Uh, Grace of Elementary School, we painted all the exterior doors. And this week, if you go by there on the weekend, we'll be painting the canopies that come out. They were just faded um, and really helped spruce up the place outside. Mr. O'Donnell um, met with uh, Johnson Controls. If you remember, we installed a new fire alarm system at Ken Allen High School, and they uh, we were able to actually wrap that up and um, do some troubling, troubleshooting because nobody's in the building to hear the alarms and see the strobes uh, go off. So we were able to accomplish that project. Along with, we were able to finish the PA system at Queen Anne's County High School, um, which has been a, a massive project, as you can imagine. We still have some speakers that we need to replace in there, and we'll do that after school hours, but the entire system is up and running. We were able to also replace the entire PA system at Centerville Elementary School across the, the street here over break, so that has been finalized. And we were met with, we had a couple pre-bid meetings. Um, one was for the Bayside Elementary School roof, the Ken Allen Ele uh, High School roof, and the Ken Allen Elementary School roof, along with, if you've ever looked at Bayside Elementary School, the exterior of the, the building envelope there needs replacement, so we were getting uh, bids on that also. Um, we, if you recall, you approved quite a bit of furniture, um, cafeteria tables. We did have cafeteria tables arrive at Sellersville uh, Elementary School, and kindergarten furniture furniture arrived at Graysonville Elementary School. Um, we did the final walkthroughs, which is nice when nobody's in the building, um, <laughs> at uh, Centerville Elementary and Bayside Elementary School for the painting of the interior building uh, this summer. So there were a lot of things going on over break. Just want to kind of keep you uh, updated on that. Um, like I said, uh, Jim McDonald and Carla Pullen and John Murdoch really put a lot of time into that. Um, sometimes it doesn't get recognized, but they, they really go above and beyond um, every, everything. So any questions? Oh, no. I didn't realize we had a month break. 
week. I know, right? right? And all a in a week. Thursday, by Thursday, I can see. By Thursday, I can see Mr. O'Donnell kind of getting tired of me. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a great guy. Tell us where you went on your vacation for that week. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's start with Bayside. Do it in alphabetical order now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I did we we appreciate that because he comes before uh, C. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think the general public knows how much right. use these schools get. It's not like a house. It's like a Walmart open oh, all the all time. Twenty-four. You know, hours. and and you know, you, like you said, when kids students are in there, it's hard to work. So yeah. you know, there's only opportunities. And even in the summer, with summer programs and all this other stuff going on, very limited of when we so get in there. Schools. You think students are in, in there between like 7.30 to 3 at the high school and then you have athletics, elementary schools 8.30 to 4, and as soon as you send somebody on top of the roof, you know, they look at, you know, who's up there and that's just a distraction to the teachers. So it really limits our time that we can truly get in and, you know, do some work. That's why the pre-bid meetings and getting all the quotes and things finalized ahead of time are really important. So when we get to it, it goes fairly smoothly. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you yeah. for your leadership with it, honestly. I mean, I just said, hey, can we get some things checked off before summer comes? You know, we got a little time, and then it's like, <laughs> so, I mean, nice far, nice. far more than I could ever have anticipated that you all would have checked off the, you know, the list. And so puts us in a great position for summer work. And, um, you know, uh, kudos to you and your team for getting so much done. I think a big Thank box you. stores are, what, 100,000 square feet. You got 14 of them to watch. I mean, we got a million for. <laughs> From so, I mean, when you put that in perspective, you go into a, you know, a, a, a big box, and you know, we got 14 of those things. Your door, not just a box, but I mean, all kinds of shapes and sizes. Yep. It's a lot of maintenance, it is. and I give our guys credit; they do. A, I mean, do a lot of work. But for nine, appreciate you. nine maintenance people, they do a very, so very good, good job. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yep. Thank you so much, Mr. Ender. I do have a question just regarding just the usage. I know a while back we had talked about looking at the community usage of the schools about um, talking about making it the same financially, just kind of re-looking at that. Is that moving <coughs> forward at all? Or? I'm going to look to, to sit on all that. Of that. That's all right. You, I mean, so, yeah. we can take a look at it. I mean, it's pretty well across. I mean, when you use it, you're going to pay for the classroom or the gymnasium, whatever, you know, area you would like. And then you require also to have a custodian. Now, if you want air conditioning. Well, you no, know, it was all that. I just know that the la one of the policies we had looked at um, about a year ago was this policy, and they were showing that depending on what kind of group you were, you may or may not pay. You may or may not pay a certain amount. You may or may not pay a lot amount. You may not pay for everything. And then even looking at, is this truly a reflection of what the cost is now with electricity going up, and so I thought we were just kind of going to not. I could take a look at those. Look I, mean, I, at the I have not. Again no. to not, well, but, don't do it now. No. Wait till next. <laughs> <week>. <laughs> mm -hmm. Will, but I'm along those that. lines, we talked to the commissioners, I believe, about removing schools as a voting place. Mm -hmm. We have, and I, that's, the, the, it's not up to them to do that. Um, okay. It's up to the election board. Okay. And what my plan will be is we're going to go through a primary right now. Right. And this will be for the, we're, we're looking at the 22 we're already in for this fall. Right. We're looking for the 22 cycle or 24, yeah, 22 cycle. And what I would, would like to bring up to the board at that time is talk to the commissioners about some other locations they'd have available. Talk to the election board and write them a letter and see if we can uh, do something so we do not have to. Have the 24 our election. 22. 24. 24. 24. 24. I'm yeah. sorry. 24. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware school. that it was the board of elections. Yeah. Okay. They, 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 and I can, you know, yeah. the commissioners are elected, so they're not. They, you know, it would be can charge so I think this fall we'll get to them and sit there before then when we do our calendar for 24 right we'll be able to make some because it's you know like you said what we had last time with our um, calendar it's hard to find days mm -hmm. I mean you know we're, we're taking days from a lot of holidays even for snow days and stuff that could come back and uh, you know it's just a day that you know to shut the system down but you're right Okay. Are you going to be able to get online for me? Can you go down? Okay. Bayside Elementary website. Yeah. I just wanted to keep the board updated um, as we move through. You know we did our big kickoff for our, our website, and then we're kind of chipping away at the others. And I, I just think it's nice and refreshing to share it with you. Um, 
certainly, um, you know, a, a little different look, but yet you can tell that it, it all goes together. Um, so you, you can all tell that it's Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Um, she's been um, basically taking each mascot and making sure that, um, you know, put a little bit of a cleaner look to the mascot. and. Um, I just think it's adorable. Uh, <laughs> and then if you go down to our, well, go to our teachy, teachers and staff, please. And then just scroll down a little bit. This part I absolutely love. So each one of our teachers, you can see there, and if you click on their picture, it'll give you um, a little bit of information. It gives you where they went to school, what their certifications are, and then just a really fun fact about them. And I just think that adds such a personal tab to this where parents can go in and if they have a new teacher, they can just learn a little bit, you know, that extra special connection um, to, our, to our staff members. So I think that was a great addition. Um, I love that. And I just wanted to share out, I thought, you know, mm -hmm. give you an opportunity to poke around yourselves. You might learn a little bit yeah. about our staff that you yeah. didn't know about before. Um, so just a lot of fun. Um, so kudos to Mrs. Powerwaters and working with the company to get another website up and running and ready to go. And we've already moved on to the next one, so right. it'll be coming to you soon, nice. soon enough. So nice. just, a, mm -hmm. just a little fun tonight, that's all. Thank you, Ms. Dennis. Thank you. Board members, um, you've had a chance to review the human resource report for this um, Everything has everybody had a chance to look at that? Any we reviewed that as Mr. personnel, Mr. Smith? May I make a motion to accept the human resource report as presented in closed session? Second, a motion, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye, aye, aye. 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 Thank you, sir. Okay, that's the, our next meeting. Regular school board meeting will be May the 4th, uh, and followed by a work session on May the 18th. Uh, do I have any other things for the board this evening? I have a motion to go back into closed session. So moved. Second. All those who say aye. 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 Thank you.